Are we at tip points right now? If I see Mexican peso 20, Philippine peso breaking out, yen wet nicely through 111, sterling with a 133 handle, and on and on and on. Is it a grind or are we at an important tip point? No, I think this is a grind. I think that this, these are streaks we're really seeing a surge. Put this in perspective for you. The euro is up five weeks in a row coming into today. Dollar yen is up eight weeks in a row coming into today. These are big streaks, and these are coinciding with a similar streak, yeah. rising U.S. yields, rising oil prices, and also rising European equities, like the DAX yeah. is up, I think, eight weeks in a row. But the other side of this, what are people selling? Emerging markets. Within this, Mark Chandler, is the balance between speculation and foreign exchange and commercial hedging of the transactions that are out there. Are we at a tension point within commercial hedging to get business done? Yeah, I'm not so sure yet. I mean, I think that uh, typically treasurers, corporate treasurers, very disciplined. What I see the difference of right now is that the cost of hedging, that is, you are rewarded for, for basically selling euros and buying dollars. So this, what we see is not so much from the corporate side, but from fund managers who are trying to manage their European and Japanese exposure. And you're paid now three, over 300 basis points to sell, the euro, to sell the euro and buy dollars. Okay, uh, Mark, if you look at the markets, what's priced in? Is it just too much positivity? It's like, you know, trade on hold, maybe a softer Brexit. Can things turn ugly from here? Yeah, of course, but I think that both sides of the so both sides of the scissors is opening. That is positive things in the U.S., where the market is moving towards uh, pricing in that fourth rate hike this year. It's about 40 percent of a chance priced in. Meanwhile, bad things are happening elsewhere. Look at what happened last week in Japan. Lower than expected uh, GDP. That is GDP contracted in Q1, and we had softer CPI. Eurozone, we're getting some soft economic data. We get the flash PMI this week. Some modest improvements expected, but there does seem to be a cyclical turn in the Eurozone economy. Right, but Mark, so, so can the Fed really afford to hike? I mean, if the rest of the world can't afford it, should it, should it think twice about hiking four times? What, what, the, what the Fed, I think, is watching is not so much what the ECB is doing or what the BOJ is doing, but it's watching that it is so close to its targets. It's basically at its inflation target, and it's very close to full employment. I think the Federal Reserve has little choice, but they continue to hike rates. I think that perhaps, to your point, Francine, is maybe that's the tragedy, is the Federal Reserve has to do what it has to do, given its mandate, given the fiscal stimulus in the pipeline. On the other hand, the ECB has got to do what it has to do, and same thing with the BOJ. And I think that ultimately what it means is that their hikes will become later rather than sooner.